Hi, Preston Salen here with Home Inspection Carolina, and today I wanted to talk about Sears homes or kit homes. Um, these were really popular after World War I uh, up until basically World War II. Um, today we think about uh, track builders, um, mass builders, but prior to, you know, I think it was uh, Levingston, Levingstown or whatever, um, you know, that was the first subdivision by uh which is after world war ii uh, uh subdivision by a large builder prior to that people built their own houses um and one thing that was really popular was kit homes um the sears story started in 1906 and uh this guy roger sears told this guy you know their sales were down on a lot of their uh the furnishings home furnishings and they were like you know what to do so he thought about, you know, they had lumber mills, they had millwork, they could just produce everything that was needed to produce a house. So produce a kid house and then we could sell everything that was in it. Pretty brilliant, actually. So in 1908, they started selling their first kit home. Um, but they weren't the only ones. Uh, there was another big company called Aladdin. Uh, there was Harris. There was a couple of other ones. It was just kind of the way you built houses. And... Um, so and it really took off after World War II. Uh, I'm sorry, World War One was over. Uh, World War One being like 1914 to 1919, I think. So you know you got all the GIs coming back, and you know they've got some money and whatnot, and they want to start a family. So kit homes were really, really popular. So Sears sold kit homes between 1908. 1940 some will say 42 but there's a little discrepancy on the last two years um, but the way this worked was you bought the entire kit um, and they ranged I mean from you know a small five bedroom house to ten bedroom house I mean they're beautiful beautiful and I urge you to Google and I'm going to show you a couple of plans here at the end of this video but it all came on a railroad car um, everything you needed except the foundation and usually these were put together by the homeowners themselves, friends, contractor friends, much similar to like a barn raising, like you may think of out in the country or Amish folks. Um, but you just needed to have the foundation and they were pretty reasonable, obviously I'm looking by today's terms. But Sears could, because they could mass produce the timber, uh, the millwork, the furnishings, they could sell it, you know, the whole kit, uh, you could get a really good deal versus if you had to buy all that stuff independently. Um, there's a couple of telltale signs if you have a Sears home or any kit home, and they're pretty historical. First of all, it had to be built during that time period, uh, roughly between 1908 uh, to 1940, maybe 42. You know, if it's older or younger than that, probably not a kit home, not a Sears home. A um, couple of other things. You, you would want to look in the rafters or uh, floor joists, someplace where you could get to the raw exposed lumber. And those uh, boards somewhere are going to be stamped and numbered, usually like with a letter and a number, uh, indicating, you know, that they had they were numbered when they had instructions to put them together. A um, couple of other things, if it's truly a Sears home, somewhere on the bottom of that tub, uh, usually, or sink, there's stamped SR, Sears and Roebuck. Um, another thing is you could look in underneath the stairwell. A lot of times there would be some sort of paperwork or something up under there. And you know, everybody wants the Sears home, but actually a lot of these kit homes, even the other kits, and they were probably, uh, you know, in my research, there were a good 12 to 15 companies doing it, but Sears and Aladdin seemed to be the two biggest. And Sears really had an advantage because they had all this, you know, they could sell the furnishings, they had all the millwork and all that. So, key to, oh, and another big thing, and I'll show you, I'm going to flip to some of the uh, examples here in just a minute, but they really like this uh, triple um, uh, column. I'll show you that in a minute. It wasn't on every plan, but it was on a lot of the plans, and I actually found a house in Asheville that was a Sears house because I recognized that, um, that column. And obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about houses that are, even the newest ones are 80 years old. So, you know, th there have been a lot of modifications and things like that over the years. But anyway, so I'm going to go over to the um, 
the show you some of the plans and some of the things to look for and how to identify. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, I thought I'd show you a couple of Sears homes here. This is the uh, Valania, I guess I'm saying that correct. Um, you can see the actual plan here and then the um, <clears throat> the, uh, the actual house itself. Obviously, they've done some changes to it, but uh, pretty nice looking house, really. Um, hopefully, I can. There we go. Um this is the catalog. I don't know what the name of this one is. And it looks like they've made some modifications over the years. But, you know, a pretty nice look looking house, man. Not bad at all. Um, I forget exactly how we going to. Yeah, here we go. Got that one. Uh, the Martha Washington. Um, this was really popular. Um, I have a Facebook friend who has this particular uh, uh, model. Um, actually, it was one of the really uh, more popular ones, too. Um, here's several of the Sears Roebuck. This is some of the early, early plans. Um, I was trying to find some of those uh, columns. I think these are pretty early on. Remember, it was from 1907 until 1940. Uh, really hit its stride in the 20s um, because, you know, you had all the World War I vets coming back and raising families, and the economy was booming in the 20s. And then in the 30s, it went the other way and kind of some say that's why, uh, you know, it led up to them just not doing it after 1940. And some will say up to 42. Uh, and then when GIs got back uh, from World War II, they actually started the whole thing that we have now, track builders, um, subdivisions and that sort of thing. But prior to World War II, there weren't really subdivisions. There were just neighborhoods and people build houses and a lot of people built kid houses. Um, this is the Crescent, cute little house, five bedroom house. Um, I, I, man, I tell you, there's a place in, in, uh, in Durham. I, I, this looks a lot like that house. I have to go back and look at that. Um, anyway, let's move it along here. Um, the Kilborn. It's a nice looking house. These are really pretty cool. Now, Aladdin was another maker of the houses that we talked about. Um, they were, from my research, second to Sears. As big as Sears, pretty close, though. And there were a lot of other kit companies, too. Harris and a couple of others, but uh, those two were the biggest. This is a really nice one, the Magnolia. Um, I think this particular house is in Benson, North Carolina. Um, if I ever go to Benson, I'm, I plan to uh, to take a look at this, the 10 room colonial. Um, let's see what we got here. This is the uh, Marquette. Pretty nice. <laughs> Looks a little bit like the Amityville Horror. I wonder if that was a Sears house. Uh, this is a little bit like that other one, except it's just one story. We had one like that before, a two story. Um, here's a couple more Sears. Oh, actually, these aren't Sears. These are some of the other companies that uh, did kit homes. You got Harris right here in 1918. Good, good Gordon Van Tyne. That was a kit uh, that also sold kits. Here's an Aladdin. That's a good looking house, man. I tell you. And uh, Bennett Homes. Lots of people sold kits because this was before track builders. This was just kind of how you know a way that people could do it, and it would come in on a train car. Uh, you just had to put your foundation. Now, this is back to a Sears kit home. And you see that triple um, column? Sears really loved that. They have that on a lot of their models. And like I said, I saw a house in Asheville that had that. So anyway, let's go out of that and uh, see if we can go back to some ways to identify Sears home. All right. Um, if you can find... Um, a house certification on it. I would look under the stairwell, um, places like that. Uh, a model number or a plan number um, would be one way you can identify. But the, you know, usually it's a multitude of things. Um, you know, it's got to be built between 1908 and 1942. Even though a lot of, most people say 40, um, pretty much like craftsman style or bungalow style. Here's that triple or. or 
you'll see this a lot up the top of the column. It's just kind of an ornate. And remember, Sears, uh, you know, in Chicago, they owned all these millworks and stuff. So they could make these really nice kind of ornate things and put them into the kit. And they could do them in bulk and mass, you know, so that they could bring the cost down as well. And just send you a nice little kit. But this is a... Now, some of the other kit homes did Craftsman stuff to type too. But this is a real, like, trademark of Sears. Well, I don't want to say trademark, but a marquee sign. All right, here's something you'll see on a lot of Sears homes. Um, they knew that, you know, the people putting these houses together were not usually not craftsmen, not professionals. So wherever they had a bunch of angles meeting, they would have it go into a block because it was just so much easier to make that angle and that angle instead of, you know, all these right angles and all that stuff. So uh, you'll see a lot of, like, just blocks where they would go into into the corner because that Sears they were pretty smart it just made it a lot easier oh, again look for a ladder and number on the joist uh, floor joists or rafters in the attic um, and this will be indicative of almost any type of kit home um, but that that's a telltale sign if you got a kit home it's built you know between war or 1908 1940 you got all this stuff uh, you got a kit home of some type but it might be Sears, it might be one of the other, and Gordon Van Tyne Harris, um, just have to look out. Um, oh, this is some of the paperwork you might see on it somewhere. Also, if you go and go look up, if the title in your county goes back really far, the original seller could be Sears and Roebuck, or the, sometimes it's put on there, Sears and Roebuck. Um, they also offered mortgages, so if you can go back and find uh, the original mortgage on it, that might can lead you to if it was a Sears home or not. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I don't know that this is usually, maybe it's on the base of the faucet, but they'll have SR. They have it near the drain if you can get underneath the tub for Sears and Roebuck. That's a real telltale sign um, if it's a Sears home. And uh, Goodall was uh, a, a manufacturer that the... Uh, uh, they were where they did so if you see this on any of the wood or, or something like that probably a, a Sears home well I hope this has been helpful um, it, it, Sears homes are really unique but all the kit homes are I, I love them all I, I really really wish that I hope someday to do like a documentary on them um, I just need to get funded somehow, but I think that would be a really interesting uh, documentary. Anyway, this is Preston Sandler with Home Inspection Carolina. Thanks for watching, listening. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you.